Hi guys, here comes my amouage video. Maybe not as um, professional and researched as I would have liked. I've been like sick all Christmas and I just kind of recovered from the flu yesterday. I was on my feet for the first time and uh, what has bothered me the most has actually been my lips. I don't know if you can see, but it's like they're just all cracked and like when I was as I could almost open my mouth because as soon as I talked it like hurt so much. It just went so dry and that just seriously been a real drag. Um, it even bothered me more than like a headache and body ache and everything, but I'm fine now. I'm just feeling kind of a bit tired and I'm just not like ready to hit the gym or anything yet. But I am okay and I have now regained my whole sense of smell. It was a little bit kind of, uh, I couldn't smell 100%, uh, maybe 70% or something it just you know the perfumes were not giving me and of course when you're sick You don't really feel like putting perfume on but I mean I do anyway kind of um, But it kind of disappeared right away. So I think that my, my nose has been pretty stuffy I don't know if I've had COVID or not, but it doesn't really matter I don't think at this point because I was not ready to go out and you know give it to people anyway no matter what it was so Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be mentioning probably like 20 Amwatch fragrances. Some of them I have um, tried really well. Uh, others I have uh, tried maybe just in store and have an opinion about them or have, you know, tried them in store many times and decided to like not buy them or whatever. Uh, so I just thought I'd give you like my overall opinions on Amwatch at, at so far. I'm still learning about this house. I don't, I can't mention a single fragrance in the, like a library collection, the ones that are called like Opus and have a number and stuff. I don't know anything about those. Um, but I, I can start by telling you that I tried Amouage fragrances for the first time like two years ago and I did not really appreciate, the, appreciate them at the time. Um, I was given a few little, you know, these Lucky Scent uh, samples um, of like Dia, Gold, Ubar, um, some other woman fragrance. I can't remember the four, but they didn't really speak to me at the time. And one of them I thought was actually quite horrible. I think it was Ubar, actually, that I really, really like today, but I didn't like it at all then. Um, and I just find this really interesting about this house that I think it might not be for like a beginner nose and someone who just kind of came from the designer world. These These fragrances have so many layers. They're so complex. They're so kind of um, challenging in a way and they have a lot of I think a lot of people might even consider them a little lady too much lady like too heavy on the florals um, I mean they do have some fragrances that come, came out kind of in the early 90s or late 80s I think um, that were like really kind of Chanel number no. five kind of like but with an oriental a more oriental touch than that and so this house was uh, established in 1983 by the Sultan of Oman. This is a house from Oman. I think the only one that I know about. I'm sure there's more, but this is, I'm sure, the most famous one. And the fragrances that are marketed to women, this is actually kind of one of the few niche houses that have uh, offerings for men and for women. Uh, Creed, I guess, is another one. But um, this is what the bottles uh, marketed to, to women look like. And this top is supposed to resemble like the um, the tower of a really famous mosque in uh, Muscat. Uh, and I think that in the, the male bottle, I don't have any bottles of, of the marketed towards men fragrances. Um, and the top of that one looks kind of like their country holy dagger, whatever. It's like a weapon, I guess, or like a knife or something. Um, so, so they're all kind of, I think the house is kind of meant to like show off their, you know, their national symbols or whatever. And the house is all about incense to me, like there's incense in some form in almost every single fragrance. Not quite. There are some some real kind of more plain fragrances, like CL is one of them. Um, I think that Ashore, let's see, you know what has Olibonum. Um, that's by Mackenzie Riley, by the way. I tried Ashore when I went to um, Warsaw last summer. I really loved it at the counter and then I realized I, I started looking up on it on Fragrantica and I saw a lot of people had compared it to Tom Ford's Jasmine Rouge and I remember loving that at first sniff but getting really bored with it so I decided that I, I didn't dare go full bottle on that one but it's a really really nice fragrance so I mean I do recommend it one of my friends in the community has it and she she really is enjoying it um, another one that I know she has a full bottle of that I just received a decant of 
uh, is meander. It comes in like, it's, it's marketed towards men. It comes in like in a pale kind of green, kind of ugly bottle to my, to my eyes anyway. Um, this is a really nice, like milky uh, fragrance. It, I don't know, is it a fig fragrance? Let me see. Oh, there's no fig and I don't know why I get that. I think it's that milkiness. It's a sandalwood fragrance for sure with like orris root, black pepper. I think it has olibanum and too. yeah, olibanum it has too. It has, let's see, yeah, carrot seed. It's a, it's a typical like carrot seed, a little bit like Eyes Closed from Byredo. I haven't done a side by side on them. Uh, this is, this has vetiver, uh, some rose, uh, cypriol oil, which I find a lot in masculine fragrances. Here it doesn't bother me. Here I think it's just, I think it's a perfectly unisex fragrance. It's also created by Mackenzie Riley. I like her work a lot. I, um, one of my favorite fragrances from her is Hosegor from A Lab on Fire. But this is nothing like that. I just wanted to mention that I like the stuff that she makes. It's very creative. This one I think maybe not so unique. There's a lot that reminds me of this. Like Lost Alice is a little bit like it, but goes maybe in a more gourmand direction. This one a little bit more carrot seedy. And what do I mean by carrot seedy is like uh, that kind of like damp, earthy, forest floor kind of feeling. Um, that can be taken too far, like for example in that one from Serge Boutons is called Iris, um, God, what is it called? Uh, Majestic, I, no, no, what is it? I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, it's, it's a famous Iris, I think, fragrance from uh, Serge Luton's, um Silver Iris is the name of it, I think. And this is much creamier, much easier to wear, but that when, when the carrot seed goes like really damp and earthy, it's really, really challenging to me. I think it smells just right out bad, but maybe I'm not there yet. Silver Iris Mist, I think it's called. Um, yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, Meander, I re highly, highly recommend. I think it's one of the more later releases. Um, let's see. Okay, Sunshine Woman. I have another, I have a review of that already on my channel. It's a super hyped fragrances, according to my nose. I don't like it that much, but on the other hand, I don't like Osmanthus, which is, I see, the do I think, the dominating note in this one. Uh, this one does not have, let's see, no, this one does not have any, any, um, olibanum, and I don't think it's so typical amouage either, this one. This is more like an easy wear that has almond, has some artemisia in the top, which I usually like, but osmanthus is that leathery kind of fruity note, um, some people say that, you know, they sometimes they use peach also to create that feeling, it's like leathery sweetness kind of. Um, to me, it's a little bit too, it becomes a little bit too cloying. It's like the opposite of transparent. It's all kind of all together. And I, you can't really, I don't get those interesting layers as I do in other Amouage fragrances. White tobacco, I think it's white tobacco floor, flowers in this one. Papyrus, juniper, and patchouli in the base. I don't know. There's something about this fragrance that doesn't just, it doesn't intrigue me that much. Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad fragrance, and I know many people love it. Uh, so get your nose on. I'm just saying it's not a safe blind buy to my nose. Sunshine Man, really interesting fragrance. I have tried that in store several times. Every second time I end up like just falling in love and I was like, I got to get a bottle of this. And the next time I'm like, wait a minute, I don't know. Did I like this? Um, to me, it gives off like a, okay, I'll tell you what it has. It's got lavender and brandy in the top. Uh, juniper, clary sage, and bergamot in the middle, and then tonka, vanilla, and cedar in the base. But I, these notes do not don't in any way kind of translate to the, to the smell that I'm getting from it. To me, it more has like a, a hay-like kind of, almost like an immortel vibe, uh, it's, and, and, and herbal. I mean, herbal could be the lavender and the sage, of course, but like, I don't know. I haven't figured this fragrance out, and I, I think I need to get like a decant and wear it at home. That's really the only way to try something, to just have a little on your hand and just kind of go and sniff it. That doesn't, that doesn't work, I think. But this is a really unique fragrance. This came out in 2015. Um, I haven't smelled anything that resembles it. Uh, so it, it's an interesting, interesting fragrance that I'm, it does intrigue me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep, you know, keep trying it and get my, maybe try to get a decant of it. So, okay, what else do we have here? Um, okay, here's a difficult one. It's Interlude Man. And this is one strong fragrance. It is, I don't know, this one isn't so amouage for me either. This is like, 
this has like oud and leather. It's like super strong leather, super strong lab denim and has oregano. I think maybe the oregano here makes it like really, really concentrated. I thought maybe it would be a little too strong. I would at least try like a little drop and then mix it with something. Like I layered it and I went dancing and it seriously ruined my night because it was just, I felt like I was just like, like a big leather, smoky bonfire kind of leather jacket. I don't know. It was just not good. Um, patchouli and uh, sandalwood in the base. I can get that a little bit, but it's all about that leather. Um, this came out in 2000 and let's see, did I write 2002 or 12? I think it says 12, but it's like it's been around for a long time. So obviously it's pretty popular. It is a beast. This is a beast. You don't need much and it stays on your skin for like forever. I mean, maybe in very, very small doses on a man, maybe. I'm not sure about this one. To me, not good. Overdose of like everything. Um, okay, so what else have we got here? I've got two versions of memoir. Memoir, not memoir of man and woman. They're both women, but they're from two different like batches. One is like a vintage one that I've gotten from a friend. And one of them is the more like recent uh, release. And I find them to be quite similar, actually. Um, maybe um, the, the newer one or the older one is a little bit more like um, potent, perhaps. This is a nice, this is a, this is like a stand, not a standard, but um, a, a representative fragrance for Amouage. It has all these layers and it has florals and it has like a smokiness. Mm, it has animal notes too. It has all these different kind of levels. It has clove, um, white florals. Uh, warm, warm, I can't, I can't even talk, wormwood, I don't know so much about, but that is in there too. Um, and it has some like mandarin orange, pink pepper in the top. It has, this has, this fragrance has a lot to offer, a lot to discover. Could be worn by either man or woman. And that I think goes in, is in general true for the Amouage fragrances that they're, this thing with that they're marketed to men or women. I, th I think it's just a way for, for them to sell more maybe, or I'm not sure if they want to like be able to like cater to like the normal audience, not just like fragrance lovers that have been into fragrance forever. It might, you know, sell them. And I think they have, you know, a few offerings that are good for like the masses. That would be like a shore, um, maybe honor. That's a, like a white floral. That's heavenly, by the way. Um, I haven't had a decant of that and tried it properly, but I've tried it on the, by the counter. It's really beautiful. Um, and then they have, you know, like lilac love, uh, Blossom Love, um, those series of fragrances I think are pretty easy to wear. Um, so, and they're not so like typical amouage, but I think these memoir, uh, woman, uh, journey, uh, journey is also, a, it's a fragrance that actually does remind me a little bit of sunshine, uh, sunshine woman, but it's better. And I think it's more interesting and has, is more layered, like, um, like as a traditional or as a classic amouage fragrance and it has more of that quality and that intriguing kind of discovery to be able to do like you can know every time you wear it you notice something new i don't have that decant here right now because i i lent it to a friend she ended up by the way buying a bottle journey woman comes in a beautiful red bottle um and the bottle can really can really uh, blow me away uh, so I have to be careful when I fall in love with a bottle because I've, as I've talked about before on my channel, this one, this one now is, um, this is Overture Woman um, from Amouage. This is my most expensive fragrance and it is maybe not my best fragrance. Or I, I mean, it's a really good fragrance. I just don't know if it for me personally is my favorite. Uh, but the bottle just kind of blew me away. I just think it's so gorgeous and I think it's like, uh, it stays on the right side of the tackiness kind of fence because I just think it's 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 just beautiful and I just love to bring it out. Um, and I have now here both over tour woman and man, and I think that they they have some things in common yet they're totally different. Yeah, over tour man is is more about leather and this lists leather, but I can't get leather. This one is is much more sweet. I know Demi Rawling recently called this a dry fragrance, and I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know what dry means to her. But for, to me, this is really sweet. This is apple brandy, like Calvados, it smells like. And the leather I don't really get. It has myrrh, it has saffron, uh, benzoin leather, labdanum, 
olibanum, like they all do, and cinnamon, which I get a lot of. So it's like a spicy, boozy fragrance uh, with a hint of leather. Um, and it has some rose, uh, some myrrh. Um, the bergamot I don't really get. It's more of a... It's, it's a beautiful fragrance. It has really grown on me. Um, I'm just, sometimes I'm not, I'm, I haven't really been into booze, but it is a boozy fragrance. And so is the one Overture Man. And I'll tell you the notes, the overlapping notes are saffron, booze, not the same notes, because this one has brandy, uh, or calvados, and the, uh, this one has cognac. Um, but booze, leather, myrrh, labdanum, cinnamon, benzoin, and geranium. So they have a lot of overlapping notes, yet they're totally different. Overture Man is definitely more masculine, but I think actually they're both quite masculine. If I had to say that this lent, you know, was leaning in any direction, I would say masculine for sure, because I think that it's a, there's nothing feminine about it. I mean, unisex, yeah, okay. But Overture Man may be a little more classic masculine. There's a little bit of that interlude man overdose of leather, but it's so, so much better. Okay, so what does it have that that is that it does not have in common with Overture Woman. Well, it has some animal notes. It just says animal notes, actually, and smoke. That could be anything, maybe, like, this has olibanum, but I don't know. Let's Clary Sage. Um, mustique it has, which is like a, um, also called lentisk, is um, like, a, like a sap coming from a tree that, like, grows, like, kind of on a rocky beach kind of area. Um, I don't know, and then it has ginger and grapefruit, and it doesn't have any apple. Um, it has cardamom and nutmeg, so I mean it's a spicy fragrance. But it's the leather takes over, I think. I mean, I don't know. I think I'll wear it more, but I'm I, I will definitely not be buying full bottle of this. It's just I think it's a little overly masculine, overly leathery, and I'm not a leather girl. Uh, this one here, it's not the leather that bothers me here because I don't really detect it. It's more, I think it's the sweet booziness. You have to be in the mood. Um, but I do agree, it's a perfect Christmas scent. And I just recently uh, watched this video from Centrifu let's see, Centifrugal Force, he calls himself. And he's made like a best of Amouage. And I think he has 34, I think, fragrances for Amouage. And this one is his number one um, out of all those fragrances. Um, but I don't know. I... I mean, I'm sure this is his favorite. I just can't take a guy seriously that has so many from the same house. Like, how can you like so many from the same house when there's so much else to choose from? I think, I think some get carried away with having a collection, like with many in the same series, like from this, like where the bottles match each other and things like that. And uh, I know people here in Sweden too, and my friends that I, I think get caught in that caught up in that kind of like ownership kind of urge. They want to own many that look the same um, and maybe go a little blind to the actual smell of the fragrance. I'm, I don't know. I think that maybe, I, I, I get the, the feeling that he's buying his fragrances himself um, and that he's not just like scent everything because I don't think his channel is that big. I'm not sure. I mean, I do like his videos. I think he's really funny and I love his accent. He's like a really thick New York accent. Um, and the way he sort of describes fragrances, but it's a lot of like, oh, this is, you have to just watch him for your, for your own, um, and make your own opinion about him. But I just thought it was fun to see that how high up he had it on his list and that Demi Rawling talked about it uh, just recently, how good it was and that she'd kind of forgotten to wear it. Anyway, but it's, it's really, I mean, it's so personal with fragrance and no one is right and no one is wrong. And I still haven't found, you know, that perfect reviewer that has my taste. I mean, I love, uh, what's her name, Sam, My World of Fragrance. She's a really good reviewer, but we have really different taste. I mean, there's some that she likes that I like, but she, there are some that she really loves that I really don't like. So, and then I found this other person named Anne Laurent, Laurent and she doesn't, she seems really honest, and I think it, she's a really, um, a, a nice, uh, what do you call it, a breath of fresh air, because she's so honest, and she says, this I really don't like. I just appreciate that so much. And I think she does get sent some stuff, but it's obvious that she doesn't get, she, she, she dares express her negative opinion. And I really appreciate that. But we have very different tastes. She hates Galbanum. Um, I, I don't know. We're, we're just so, so different. So I still have yet to find, like, the perfect... And I love, um, what's her name, Marie or Maria, that is so funny. 
um, what does she call her her channel? Now I can't remember. I'll, I'll I'll make sure to link it below because I think she's she's definitely worth uh, for you to look into and have a good laugh. But she mostly reviews designer fragrances, and I a lot of fruity, a lot of black currant, a lot of raspberry, and things like that. And I'm just not into that at all. Uh, but I do have to watch her every now and then because she is so charming. Uh, so they all have their good things, but. Um, I still have, I need to find someone that really can like recommend good fragrances and I know that, okay, when she says it or when he says it, then I know I'm going to like it. I don't really have one of those. Okay, on to the video here. Uh, material, really, really good. Uh, it's created by Cecile Sorokian. It's kind of a, a recent, really came out in 2021. It's like the perfect oriental fragrance. Um, not super unique because there's a lot out there that reminds me of this one. I mean, it has... It has incense. Well, they all have incense, basically. But like uh, Elemi, incense, guayac wood, tonka, vanilla benzoin, lab denim, and oud, I guess. It's not like a standard amber. It's like an oriental oudy incense amber. But it is, I've already worn, I just got this, and I've just already worn like a lot of it. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot that is kind of like this out there on the market. So I don't think that Amouage has created like a unique thing maybe, but it's a really, really good fragrance. Not that great performance, I'll have to say, but a lot of their fragrances have incredible performance. And this is no exception. This has beautiful performance. It just, you, I can smell myself when I wear this. It stays on all day. It's super loud. It's almost a little too strong. I might have preferred it slightly more, slightly less potent than, than it is since it's kind of something that I'm struggling with, this fragrance. Um, okay, Reflection Man, I love a lot. It's a kind of a nice, clean kind of... I don't find it very masculine. It's marketed towards men. I don't think there's... Is there a Reflection Woman? I'm not sure. I think there is, actually. Um, okay, it has rosemary, pink pepper, pet to grain in the top. So it's, I guess, a little green. I find it to be kind of a clean sheet kind of fragrance. And then it has some florals in the middle. And neroli, oris neroli, jasmine, and ylang ylang. And in the base, sandalwood, vetiver, cedar, and patchouli. But it, this is like a fresh, smooth, floral, pretty fragrance. But that a man also could wear. But I, I would say this is more feminine than, than, um, than masculine. Um, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. I love this fragrance. I mean, I'm looking out for... I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm on a total no-buy now, though. I'm not really even supposed to look. Uh, I don't buy even secondhand, not even if I find a really good price, until I have found a job. I've already applied for two jobs today, one job yesterday, so I'm um, definitely not too sick to apply for work anymore. Okay, here, this is an interesting one. I have one here called Enclave. It's also marketed towards men, so it's Enclave Man, and it has spicy mint. I think this just recently came out, too. I forgot to take notes about that, but spicy mint, cardamom, cinnamon, Pink pepper. So yeah, a lot of their fragrances have cinnamon, actually. Um, Olibanum, there it comes again. Patch, or patchouli, vetiver, rose, amber extreme. I'm not quite sure what that is, but I guess it's an amped up amber note. Leather and labdanum. This is quite masculine, I think. This mintiness is interesting, though. I think I find this to be intriguing, and I'm really looking forward to wearing more of it, but I have not yet given this, like, several proper wearings, like I maybe would have wanted to, to make a a good like overall amouage video but this I've tried in store at the counter several times and I just have not been able to stop sniffing my hand. Now at home here I've worn it a little bit. Um, I find it maybe a little bit too masculine for me to go full bottle. Um, it's not like I th I'm worried about that other people will find that I smell masculine. It's more like I get the vibes like that I don't want of like smelling like a man myself. I'm sure it's just like learn things or like I have, you know, have, have created some kind of like a, a little chain of associations in my brain. Um, so, so I, I mean, I, I it can probably be washed away, you know, these, neg these, what do you call them? These prejudices again, like what is female, what is male? And it doesn't matter at all. I, I recommend this enclave. I think it's one of the better, more interesting ones. And then I'd like to mention also Epic Woman. Uh, which I went through like a milliliter or two last summer and I just enjoyed it so much. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever worn, I felt at the time. Uh, also created by Cecile Sorokian. Uh, it's very, very smoky, but in kind of a, in a, in like in a beautiful feminine way. I don't think it's, it's it, it, does, it doesn't mean that it's feminine 
only, but I, I found that it was like a very, it's not a classic masculine kind of perfume anyway. It had vanilla, um, oud, uh, caraway, cinnamon. I didn't get much cinnamon, but it, it's all about that incense in, a, in, the, in a, the most beautiful way. But then I tried it recently at my friend, and I, I just I was about to get a bottle not too long ago because you can actually find it online quite cheap. This is something you need to know about Amouage. I forgot to mention this in the beginning. There is like a suggested retail price that's really, really high. So for a bottle this size of 100 mil, some of them come in 50 as well, uh, they, ch they suggest to, to charge like $340. Uh, but you can find them cheaper online. This is actually an exception. This one I've never seen at a reduced price online. This this used to be like a hair red exclusives. Um, now I think you can, I, I mean, I bought it this in, in store and I paid the full retail price. I don't know how I could, but I did. But I haven't found this like on the, di like at discounts. But Epic, uh, a lot of like Journey. I know my friend got a good price on her Journey one, Journey woman. Um, you can get also the, the man, like Meander. I've seen lots of fragrances. So so be sure and check before you buy. Um, but when I tried Epic again, I thought it was just a little bit too heavy, too smoky, too, too, um, too potent perhaps. Like I didn't feel like wearing it. And um, I could have gotten like a decant, but I thought, no, you know, I don't feel like it right now. Um, maybe that one two milliliter that I used last summer was enough. I don't know. Um, maybe it'll come back to me like this urge of wanting it, but I'm so glad I didn't get a bottle because I find this one epic to be quite difficult to wear. I know a lot of people love it. It's kind of a classic. And someone pointed out that it's actually not Cecile Sorokin that has created it with someone else. And she went and she was like educated by this person. I can't remember the name now, but it was not, or it wasn't material. I can't remember. I think maybe there, there were three people that created Epic Woman together and maybe Cecile Sorokin was one of them and she was maybe the one who was, you know, up and coming and learning from the other two. I'm not sure if that's what this person meant. Someone commented, I think, on my, either on Facebook, when I do videos on Facebook too all the time, in Swedish from my local community and, and here, or it was here, I'm not sure. But um, I think it's a, I'm not surprised that she was in on it because I think that it, it's interesting. It's really interesting, that fragrance. And Epic Man, is I can say the same. I've only tried that in store, but several times, and I think it's beautiful. I'd love a decant so I can really go all in and just kind of try it out. Um, and I'm I'm going to get a, a sample. I'm going to meet a perfume friend later today, and I'll be getting a sample of, like, my first library collection fragrance. It's Opus 8, I think, or something. Um, so I've yet to try a lot of those. Oh, I did forget to mention one of the biggest fragrances in among the decants that I have is Ubar. This is the one that I tried like two years back and didn't like at all. But now, um, now I really, really like it. It's like a really, um, me and my friend, we both agree that this is a fragrance, Ubar, that it really, I, I think maybe it's discontinued this one. Um, that that it, it almost calls for a special occasion because it's so large, this fragrance, and it has like everything in it. It has so many florals in it. Let's see, it has jasmine, ylang ylang, lily of the valley, tuberose, rosewood, that's not that's not a flower, the orange blossom, freesia. Uh, let's see, what else? Violet leaf, orange, it's got, it got some fruitiness, it's got some like ambergris in the base, it's got balsamic um, notes in here. I don't think it has olibanum though. Strangely enough, <laughs> Cope Cook Pahu Balm. Um, anyway, it's got a lot of things going on. And someone says it has like a grandmother vibe. And I can kind of see what they mean because it has like a lot of that. It came out in 1995. I mean, in the 90s, perfumery, what was trending in perfumery then is really different from now. And I have actually tried it, a formula from then. But I mean, I, I was kind of into perfume mostly designers like when in the in the 90s I mean I was I was an adult then and I wore perfume and maybe that this is why I like it but I did I find, found it difficult um when I tried it two years ago so it, it it's a big floral I would say that but that has a really interesting base I think the ambergris probably plays into that it has sandalwood vanilla patchouli I mean the all these notes are are were quite typical for the time in the base of perfumes um, but I think this one, what makes this one special are like the balsamic touches and also like the ambergris. Um, 
yeah, the tender, the fruity, they often had fruity tops too, but I think Ubar is not, for sure not a safe blind buy. It's, um, it's I think many would, would say it's a challenging fragrance, and um, I don't find it that challenging, but I know my daughter thinks it's old lady-like. Yeah, maybe it is. I don't know. I don't really care uh, if it's old lady-like or not. I think it's a great fragrance. And I know, I actually know this guy who's really an amouage freak, and he, Ubar is his favorite. So I think that if you can just kind of get past this thing with, you know, stereotypically masculine, feminine, and all that kind of stuff, or what is old lady-like and what isn't, just kind of focus on what do I think about this. Um, may, maybe, I know these associations are hard to kind of get out of your system, but when you do, you it, it's, it's really it frees your mind and there's so much more to take in if you can just kind of like free yourself from all of that. But I know it's hard. I mean, if, if there's a fragrance that reminds you like of an old boyfriend or something, I mean, that's never going to go away, <laughs> I don't think. Um, so I don't have any negative, really personal associations with these fragrances. Um, uh, but I think that, uh, yeah, I don't know what kind of kept me back from liking Ubar back in like, or two years ago. I'm not sure. I think it was like, I don't know. I guess right then I was into other things. I was into iris. I was into like, um, what was I into? More like ambers. And these. this was just overly floral, I think. Maybe that was it. And Lily of the Valley. I never really liked Lily of the Valley. Um, but here the mixture is just so interesting. So I think definitely if you can, if you can find a decant or uh, even a bottle or just, you know, sniff it at someone's house, uh, get your nose on it because it's, it's, an, it's an experience. But you really have to kind of like pay attention to these fragrances uh, because there's so many layers and they kind of, it kind of, the fragrances kind of unfold like each phase at a time. Um, and they smell sometimes different from, this one I find actually, over to a woman I find quite linear actually. I think, I don't think it changes much like um, from, from the opening to the dry down. That booziness kind of remains, the sweetness remains, it kind of, it kind of just fades out but it kind of remains the same. Whereas some of these other ones change a lot. So, I mean, yeah, Memoir and Journey, all these fragrances, they're, they're different, like the, the different phases. Yeah, I really, I just kind of wanted to, you know, spread my enthusiasm about Amouage. I think there's so much to discover, and I'm still discovering this little, um, I'm just going to try to collect what I have here. I'll show you, except the bottle there, I've got like all these decants, and I have more kind of coming in, and I just think it's... And I've been through other decants and kind of passed things on. I've just, I'm just kind of discovering these still. And when I every time I wear them, I feel like I discover something new or have a new opinion about these fragrances. And that maybe is what is so special. Um, and I like the fact that they use, you know, like big perfumers, uh, Mackenzie Riley, Cecil Sorokin, um, what's his name? Interlude Man was I, not that I like that one, but Pierre Negrin I think is quite a famous perfumer. Uh, Lucas Cizouac, I can't pronounce these different names. Some of them are, yeah, Overture Man and Woman were created by two different perfumers. This was Anik Minardo, um, and the other one is also a female, and her name is Ka Karin Vink, I can't even see what I've written. Uh, another female <laughs> perfumer, um, but not the same person. Overture Man actually has a rating on Fragrantica 4.42, which is really, really high. Um, I can't remember how many people have rated it though. That's something you should always look at because if it has a really high rating and only like 20 people have rated it, sometimes I suspect that like maybe the people behind the brand have like gone in and you know asked their friends to rate it. So if you really want to trust Fragrantica, I mean really the, your own taste is all there is to trust, but I think it's important to, yeah, trust your own nose, but also look, if you want to look at Fragrantica, make sure to see how many people have rated a fragrance. Because I know that over to a man and woman are hard to find, and they're not like in every department store. Our local department store does not carry this one. Um, and I know the one in Warsaw does, uh, but actually I don't think they have it like everywhere. So, of course, fewer people are going to be rating it. So, I don't know. I don't know about this interlude man. Did I, let's see if I wrote down... Sometimes I write down the, the ratings. Uh, Sunshine Woman had 4.07. Uh, Ashore only 3.77. That was surprisingly low, actually. I thought that would be a real people pleaser. Ashore is, I mean, is really beautiful. Maybe it's more beautiful than, than Tom Ford's Jasmine Rouge. Um, I mean, maybe because of the ambergris. Uh, ambergris, I think, improves any fragrance. I mean, it's such a nice note. 
I love fragrances that have ambergris. And it has olibanum, and I don't think jasmine rouge has that. I think jasmine rouge is more about spices, like it has florals with spices and a little bit of a woody base. But um, yeah, this one has solar notes. I mean, maybe I should go back to a shore and try it again. Um, I mean, I know someone that owns a bottle. I could probably get a hold of a little, um, a few drops of it. Okay, well, those are my thoughts on Amouage. Please comment. I'm happy to hear what you have to say about it and uh, which ones I really need to try uh, that I might have missed.